Hey, buddy, watch this. Welcome to the Advice Arena, where I give you advice on how to play Arena. <laughs> Today, uh, I'll be playing a rogue in Arena, because it's a good Arena class. And uh, I should note that this is right at the beginning of the Whispers of the Old Gods expansion release. So uh, a lot of new cards that nobody really knows how to play quite yet or how good they are for sure. So um, we'll be learning how to play uh, Whispers of the Old Gods Rogue together. Hopefully we can put together a nice little deck uh, that gets us more wins than the first ever Advice Arena run, the Druid, which only got two wins. I would hope for at least six to seven. My average is just shy of six, so hopefully um, we can start to make that better with some concentrated effort and careful thinking about our draft and our playstyles. But moving on, let's go ahead and jump into our cards, starting with our very first one, a rare, of course. Uh, Summoning Stone is pretty bad. Arcane Golem got terrible, arguably, uh, with its recent nerf. Uh, Dark Iron Skulker, on the other hand, is a very good card, both in general and, I think, pretty solid in Arena. Uh, Hearthstone appears to be a little laggy, so bear with me as... Uh, the servers sort themselves out. This is very troublesome. Um, here, uh, Maiden of Lake's pretty weak in Rogue because um, it's just not a great minion. It's, it's weak in general, I should say. The the hero cost, hero power cost reduction doesn't help much in Rogue. Oasis Snapjaw's pretty weak. Tomb Pillager on the other hand is a great card. Coins are good in a 5-4 body. It's fantastic for 4. Uh, Hearthstone's going to die. Uh, these cards are all just awful, just miserable. <laughs> I, t I, 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 Magma Rager's terrible. Frostwolf Gunt, Grunt is at least a taunt, perhaps, which is not the worst thing ever. Um, Stone Tusk Boar can set up combos, but that's less important in Arena. I think I'm going to take the Frostwolf Grunt just in case I need like that late taunt save. Um, also, with the weapon, this can do a little bit of work on turn 2 or turn 3, maybe. Uh, Defiance Ringleader is good with a coin in Arena sometimes, but North Sea Kraken is just such a great late-game card. Um, I can't pass it up. I don't really like Vanish much. Uh, Working Infiltrator is actually pretty good. Volcanic Drake is, is solid as well. Uh, Particularly with a card like Dark Iron Skulker, perhaps, if you kill three or four little imps or silver hand recruits, you can go crazy. Uh, I like Evil Heckler quite a bit, too, just as another four mana 5-4, and taunts are always good to have. Uh, but I'm going to take the Worgen Infiltrator. A lot of times with Rogue, you're going to end up weaponing on turn two, and having a minion out on turn one that's guaranteed to live um, can do some work with your turn two hero power. Um, okay, these are... These are not very good in my mind. Wind Fury Harpy, I think, should be a good card, and I always expect it to be a good card, but it never is. <laughs> it's never good. Spot of Nazoth is a little too slow. You're not ever guaranteed to have minions out when this dies, and it's, in fact, unlikely because you give your opponents the control. Um, Faceless Behemoth, I, I guess we're going to pick Faceless Behemoth just to have a giant late-game body um, to play on a top-decking scenario. I don't think it's a good card, but... Uh, it seems better than the alternatives, perhaps. Uh, Squirming Tentacle, I think, is a fine arena card. Enubar Ambusher, I don't like much just because it can punish you pretty hard um, if your opponent's able to kill it and remove a minion from your board just because that's a huge tempo loss. I like Tomb Pillager a lot again, and I think four drops are pretty vital. So I'm going to take another Tomb Pillager, particularly if we start getting coins. Cards like North Sea Kraken and Faceless Behemoth are a little bit better just because we can get them out a turn or two sooner. Like a turn eight North Sea Kraken might make a huge difference in... Uh, jostling for the board so having a couple tomb pillagers doesn't feel too bad um here we have tinker town it's very unlikely we're going to get any max so i think we have to pass on tinker town um mechanically yeti is another solid four drop um that gives us some combo potential and mana curve flexibility um shiv i kind of like too it's sometimes good just to have that extra ping to combine with the hero power because you can kill something with two health for instance it's not bad in the late game either because if you top deck it you can do some work with the damage and still draw a card and have plenty of mana to um to work with uh i don't consider it a great turn two play almost ever but uh i like to have you know one two three kind of card draw cards in the deck at some point so i think i'm going to stick with the shiv since we already have a couple good four drops and we're likely to see more 
Uh, but we might not get a card like Shiv again. <clears throat> uh, Jungle Panther, I don't think it's all that great, just because of the two health. The stealth is nice, and it, it's a fine card. Um, but I don't think it's better than Silverhand Regent, just because this one has tons of potential value. It's a good 5-drop and a decent 3-drop, because it makes your opponents a little scared. Uh, Storm and Champion's fine, but... Uh, rogues don't necessarily have a good way to guarantee that they're going to have minions out on the board like a classic like Shaman or Paladin might, so it's less good in Rogue. So I think we'll go with a 3-drop here with Silverhand Regent. Uh, target Dummy's bad. Ogre Ninja is okay. T, I don't really know yet. <laughs> um, I think T is just a little too slow in Arena and... If we Thistle Teed into a Frostwolf Grunt, for instance, we'd feel pretty bad. Whereas in Constructed Play, you know your Thistle Tee is going to hit a card that fits your deck. In Arena, you have no such guarantee. So I, I don't think Thistle Tee is going to work for us. I think we have to take Ogre, Ogre Ninja in this uh, instance. Um, Voodoo Doctor is not that great, just too weak. Ship's Cannon uh, is actually a solid 2-drop just because it's a 2-3. And there is the potential that we get a Pirate in Rogue. Um, Rogue does have some Pirates, so... There's some potential synergies to watch out for. Cold Blood, it's okay, but it's just hard to make it work. And um, I'd rather have the minion. Uh, Booty Bay Bodyguard is just a worse version of Evil Heckler and Overcosted. Win Free Harpy, I already discussed, not that great. Spite Full Smith actually is solid just because it has 6 health and a decent attack. And with Rogue, it's even better because the Enrage effect does buff your weapon, which can make some big plays. So we're gonna, we'll take this Spite Full Smith for sure. Uh, Raider and Mooklas are both solid 5-drops that benefit um, from your hero power, and particularly good after turn 7. Uh, but we already have a couple late-game cards and some good 5-drops, so I think Eviscerate's a much more flexible and powerful option currently where we stand. <coughs> uh, Anubis Sith Sentinel is a little too slow for me and, and hard to control. I think it's unreliable. Abusive Sergeant's a solid card uh, sometimes, and depending on the deck. Um, I again think it's a card that's somewhat better in classes where you're likely to get multiple minions out so you know you always have something on the board um, I kind of like another Silverhand Regent to be honest just to make sure we have a good early game curve and uh, Rogue can benefit from hero powering now it, that said Rogue does tend to hero power half as often right they, they don't always need to hero power every turn um, but still sad I think Silverhand Regent's the, the best option uh, Dark Scale Healer, I think, is an underrated card in general in Arena. It's a heal to yourself and your, your friendly minion, so that's nice. Iron Forge Rifleman's pretty weak, but Flame Juggler is actually a very good 2-drop. Uh, can do a lot of things, trades well, and the deal 1 damage sometimes can make a big difference, pinging off uh, an opposing minion and setting up a good trade. So we'll take Flame Juggler for sure. Uh, okay, so Stormwind Champion we still don't need. Spectral Knight's a great card, but again, we do have some 5-drops already. Two minions, five drops, one's removal. Uh, assassinates just really good hard removal. We have an eviscerate, but that doesn't always kill effectively. I think I'm going to take the assassinate just because we do have a couple good five drops and no removal yet. This might make a big difference in certain matchups. Uh, Grunt's still bad. Sprint is okay sometimes uh, but spending seven mana just to get cards is awfully punishing uh, i'd rather have a three mana draw two or a four mana draw two than a seven mana draw four because even in the late game when you get that it just doesn't leave you with enough mana in the same turn to do anything but eviscerate i think is a great card to have in general so i'm gonna grab the eviscerate oh man <laughs> it's just busting out the <laughs> The, the leftovers here. Somebody had a really good arena draft, and we got all the cards they didn't pick. <laughs> um, Booty Bay is still bad. Wisp, of course, is awful. I think we have to take the Stormwind Champion here, even though it's not my favorite card. Alright, here's some new stuff. Evolved, Kobold. Uh, even though it's evolved, it's pretty terrible. A 2-2 for 4 is just miserable. Um, Zealous Initiate, I think, is hard to predict and control, just as that Death Rattle effect. Uh, much like Anubiseth Sentinel, it's kind of got a similar flavor. Uh, and on turn 1, I don't think it's that good. Bladed Cultist, on the other hand, um, I don't know. It might be decent. 
uh, for instance, if you have like a two drop and a one drop on turn three, you can play your two drop and then also get your Blade Cultist out as a two three, which is basically playing two two drop bodies, which seems like it could be pretty good if you don't have a good turn three or if you're trying to fill in some mana. So I think the idea of Blade Cultist works pretty nicely. Um, all right, so Thistle T is still too slow. Injured Blade Master is uh, not bad at all. We don't really have any synergies with its heal or anything. Uh, Matter Bomber can also actually be pretty good, in my mind. Um, we don't have like any one health minions like Silverhand Recruits or Amps. We have the Worgen Infiltrator, I guess. But uh, beyond that, it's very unlikely that this punishes us, but it might help us clean up an opponent's board. Uh, we wouldn't hurt to have like one or two more five drops. So uh, we have a couple good threes. And I'd rather get a, an impactful three than just a minion three. So I think I'm going to take the Matter Bomber over the Blade Master for now. Uh, okay, so Shadow Pan is another solid five drop. Uh, but Nerubian Prophet is a pretty interesting card just because it can be a good three drop, it can be a good five drop. Uh, there are a couple different ways this can reward you with a bigger tempo swing. Um, so I think we're going to take Nerubian Prophet just to test it more than anything else, almost to to see if it's good. Because Shadow Pan Rider is, is, although a five drop really feels more like a seven drop, or you know you have to combo it to get the real value out of it. So playing it on turn five typically is not that great. Nerubian Prophet, on the other hand, I, I like the potential of this, and I want to see it in action. So it's, it's, it's six mana, but it's not actually kind of a six mana card. So it's a little deceptive to see it here. Um, Wolf Rider's solid. Shattered Sun Cleric is also solid. I kind of like the idea of Shattered Sun Cleric. We have some one drops that we could coin out of Shattered Sun and do some fun stuff with. Um, could make our Frost Wolf Grunt better, for instance. Um, Elven Archer's actually not that bad either, but Rogue does have a way to consistently ping off minions with its hero power, so I think that's less valuable. Uh, these are debatable. This is a tough choice for me. Having three damage is sometimes just a removal spell to kill a minion, but we do have the double Evis and the Shiv to hit stuff. So perhaps the Shatters and Cleric focuses more on building a board, which is nice. Uh, Murloc Raider's bad. A noob I still don't like. I'm a little hesitant to pick up another one drop just because I don't want us to run out of cards too quickly. The only card draw we have right now is Shiv. So we could potentially run into a world where we run out of cards, but I think it's just the best card of those, so I, I think I have to take it. Hmm. This is another tough choice. Um, I still don't like Maiden. Tinkers... Tinkers can be pretty good in my mind. Um, it's obviously not usually a good four mana spell just because you want the combo to hit a minion can allow you to trade up occasionally. Uh, I kind of want to lean towards Sap just because of the Whispers of the Old Gods. Uh, this is really good at just denying mana. If they play a big 8-mana minion and we Sap it, they've just wasted an entire turn. And that's a big enough tempo advantage that could allow us to steamroll games in our favor. So uh, this is, although we have Assassinate as the removal, Sap is another kind of soft, hard removal, if you will. Um, so it, it's cheap, too, so we could really gain an advantage if we use it well. Uh, so now we really need to start thinking about our curve. We are probably should have been already a little bit, but we're down to six choices left. Um, actually, five choices left. Uh, we have how many two-drop minions? Only three. We have a, couple, a few two-drop spells, but we really wouldn't hurt to get, you know, two more two-drops. Uh, for three drops, we have three... Four drops, we have two, so we could also use a good four drop. I think we're set on late game. We have a lot of five drops and a, a couple past that. So uh, typically I like Silverhand Knight better. Volcanic Drake can be okay, but Aberrant Berserker seems like a fine card, and uh, it helps us fill in the four mana hole just a little bit. Uh, Journey Below here is good just because it's card draw and allows us some mana flexibility. So this could be a 2 drop, it could be a 4 drop, it could be a 5 drop. Ravenel Assassin's a fine card, but again, I think we're fine on late game. Cavaldir is is another 1 drop that we don't need and have no synergies for, so Journey Below feels like a pretty obvious choice. Um, Alright, this is tough. Knife Juggler, despite the nerf, I think is still a decent card. 
Uh, it has some synergies with Silverhand Regent, but that's about it as far as our deck is concerned. Uh, Wild Pyro is actually not bad with cards like Eviscerate and Sap and Shiv. Um, but I kind of want Undercity Huckster. Just because it's another form of card draw, essentially. We currently have Journey Below and Shiv for card draw. But I don't know, Wild Pyro could give us such a big advantage if we... We have um, Dark Iron Skulker for AoE. But, you know, Wild Pyro Evis can kill a 5 health thing. Wild Pyro Shiv can kill a 2 health minion. We only have one minion that has one health that would die instantly to it. We have some Silverhand Regent minions, perhaps. We could even activate a Berserker. This is a tough choice for me. Undercity Huckster <coughs> is fun and new, but a 2-2 without the potential to do extra damage like Knife Juggler might just be a little too slow early. We can maybe... Oh, man, he's cleaning up on Legendary. He's nice. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Wild Pyro. This is for the better body and uh, the potential spell synergies. Um, here I'm going to take Haunted Creeper just because it's the best value minion. Sinister Strike's unnecessary. Elven Archer's unnecessary. We have a lot of different ways to do one damage. Uh, Archer Horse Rider's a great card. We need some three drops too. Uh, we only have three right now. I think Storm of Night's pretty subpar. Deadly Poison... It's tough to make it work well. And we have a lot of low-cost stuff, so I'm still concerned about getting value out of our deck. All right. Uh, we didn't actually get any pirate synergies for our ship's cannon, and Shady Dealer's not actually a pirate himself. Uh, so that doesn't help any, uh, and he won't get buffed ever. Blade Flurry got objectively worse. We have a couple ways to deal with AoE stuff with Wild Pyro and Dark Iron, so I don't think we need the Blade Flurry. I think the another, another Journey Below is just fine. We could get some really good Death Rattle cards and pick what we need along the way, essentially. So that'll do it. That's uh, that's 30 cards. A lot of early game, one and twos, but a lot of those twos are kind of removal spells and not minions. We still ended up with three, four, five, two drops, which is fine. Uh, three one drops, but Blade of Cultists almost are two drops in a way. Uh, four threes, three fours. We're a little light on fours still, but a lot of fives. Some decent late game too. The Rubian Prophet can actually be a four drop as well, so that might help a little. Anyway, we'll see what we do. On four at least, we can play a two and hero power, that kind of stuff, so we have ways to, to fill in holes with Rogue. Uh, as far as with this run, I don't know. I'm not the best Rogue Arena player, admittedly, even though it's a great class. So I never have high hopes for Rogue. I'd say uh, five to seven wins. All right, so we'll toss back the five, but I don't mind keeping all this stuff. Uh, we have the coins. We can actually coin. We can, we can make a turn two play like uh, Frostwolf coin Bladed Cultist. That would be pretty good. Uh, but we'll see what he plays. Because the Flame Juggler might work as well, just to ping off something. We'll, we'll just have to see. Flame Juggler Bladed Cultist might be even better than Frostwolf Bladed Cultist. So we'll just hang tight here. No need to play this by itself. One attack does almost nothing. Ooh, I think in that case I'm gonna play the the uh, Frost Wolf instead of the Flame Juggler because the Flame Juggler is just gonna hit the face for sure, which it doesn't really do much. The Taunt doesn't accomplish anything either. This is really just to get four attack out instead of two. Um, so in other words, like this could be a fifth attack power next turn. So that's totally fine. That's a two for two. I'll make that trade all day. He's thinking about playing a one drop or something there. Uh, I could hero power here, um, but I'm just gonna play the flame juggler to make more attack power on board. 
Again, it's wasting the ping, but this time I just I need to get something that can kill a minion out. If he plays a five health minion, it's gonna be tough. Oh, that's totally fine though. Uh, we'll we'll just leave this alive. We'll kill the demolisher, play our berserker, and leave that alive. There's no we could hero power journey below, um, but I want to make sure to get some minions out. I want to get minion value before a, a flame strike happens, right? So now, of course, he can play a minion and kill this, but it's probably not going to be very efficient if he does that. So, yeah, he can make this a 3-4, but he, he'd have to hero power. Now he can't even hero power. So he's probably going to go face. No, he did do it. Okay. Uh, that was actually the better outcome, I think. Uh, in this instance, I think I'll silver hand hero power. I could skulker, but that doesn't really set up any cleaner trades. I could just ogre ninja, trade, trade. That gives me the most power on the board. So many options. But, let's see, he's on turn six. We coined, so he can't flame strike yet. No, I still, I, I want to play the Ogre Ninja just to get the most power out. So we have 11 attack on board right now. If you play something big, the Ogre Ninja, I keep saying Ogre. <laughs> the Ogre Ninja can perhaps contest it. Oh, that's actually, could have been good, but it's not that good. Uh... I'm trying to decide if I'd rather the Ogre Ninja kill this or if I'd rather just kill the Berserker. I mean, I'm always worried about Flame Strike a little bit. So in other words, if I keep the 6 health Ogre at 6 health, that's a little more Flame Strike resistant than uh, if it's at 1 health. It can also be pinged off, of course. Uh, so yeah, I think this is just objectively better. If I went this way, even if it landed correctly, um, this could trade and it'd be 1 health too. This is probably not the best turn to do this, but... I'm attacking with a weapon first, because if this misses, I don't want it to just to hit a divine shield, I want it to actually kill the minion. I guess it doesn't actually matter too much, but... If it had been, if it had been a 2 to 3 health minion, it would have mattered. Oh, gosh. Uh, uh, I guess needs is just the best. Cairn is good, too, but I have some plays next turn if I need to. Sneeds is... Yeah, okay. That's what we were worried about. Shoot. Ugh. Let's do this again to start. Uh, yeah, we'll just Tomb Villager. Uh, Worgen. I'm not gonna weapon. I'd rather get the Worgen out just for extra juice on the board. I'll probably make this trade in Sneeds, and uh, you can't do that. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I can't play Sneeds now. That might be mere entity. Uh, I have to do it this way, I think. All right, so that's that's duplicate. Uh, I think I'm okay with giving him the duplicate, though. Now I think that's Vaporize. Could be Ice Barrier. Could still be Counterspell, right? I don't think I can attack just in case it's Vaporize. I don't have to kill him right now, so I'm just going to hold this minion. I'll trade it into something and see if I can't kill the Dark Iron Skullker on the... No, okay. That's actually two relatively weak Flame Strikes, I suppose. In the scheme of things. Uh, so we know it's not mere entity, so this is fine now. 
If he polymorphs this, at least our behemoth is likely to get some value. Alright, that's not too scary. We're going to test for Counterspell with the coin. Well, I guess we don't actually have to yet, do we? No, we're in no hurry. Go ahead and clear that up just so it doesn't get too nasty. He probably trades here. No, he doesn't have to, though. So that might be Mirror Energy again. We still don't know if that's Vaporize. Oh, that's not bad. He gets a good trade, but if we get another one of those, that'd be good. Oh, man. No luck. So we still don't know if that's Vaporize, do we? Let's, uh, let's test for Counterspell first. It's not Mere Entity, the new one. Counterspell, okay. So that could be Vaporized now. I'm not that worried about another flame strike or a blizzard or whatever. These things have six health too, so even if he does do that, he can't ping off one after flame striking. He has two cards left. We have 17 power on board. We don't know that's a vaporize, so we're still going to probably run our pyro into it. I'm just going to assassinate that thing because I have a huge board. Alright, so I definitely made the right decisions there. That was the second one. The first one was the counter spell. The second one was the vaporize. So, uh, killing the uh, the the four two stormpike was the right decision with the fameless the faceless instead of going face. Normally, I would have gone face and not dealt with the four two or used my weapon later on. Uh, but since I didn't know if it was vaporize or not, I had to wait a turn. Uh, we have lethal on board with with one minion here, so I'm just, I'm not gonna play these. Just gonna save my resources in case there's some just crazy shenanigans. Yeah, pretty good game. Golden War Golem. Oh yeah. So let's play one more. That's a pretty fast game. Uh, I don't like to make my videos too long for Advice Arena. Uh, multiple parts per run is fine, so I don't want to overwhelm you guys with every single video. Druid Kowalski. Back. Uh, these are pretty slow. I'm going to keep the Shattered Sun just in case I get a one drop. Uh, since I have the coin, might do some cool stuff. We'll probably journey below turn one. We could save it for the Wild Pyro, but we also have the coin for the Wild Pyro. Um, I guess turn two Wild Pyro coin journey it would be okay, but it'd kill our Pyro too. So I don't think we need to save the journey below for the Pyro. We might get a really good minion instead. Eh, we didn't get a good minion. Uh, I'm going to take the Death Lord just because Druids might have trouble dealing with it. We also have the Sap. If it like pulled a Ragnaros or something, uh, we have a way to deal with it, right? So... Death Lord's a fine arena card in general, I think. It's going to be good against these oozes. And I'm probably actually going to coin it out against the oozes. We have another three to follow up. We lose the coin for the pyro, but thankfully we got the shiv, so we can still activate the pyro eventually. Um, if I didn't have another three, I probably would have... Maybe just hero power, I don't know. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. Um, I think I still do this. I don't attack, and I'll tell you why. Because I could attack here, right, and set it up, and it would die next turn when he traded if he decided to trade. But um, essentially, if I attack now, I'm allowing his tentacle to attack this turn, my turn. 
if I wait, his cynical doesn't get to attack until his turn. Um, so in other words, I delay the amount of damage it can do by a turn. So next turn I might be able to shiv it after he sends it in, and it only gets to attack once instead of twice. And I don't care about my health, so if I have to hero power it down to kill it, that's fine. I'd rather take the two damage than my death lord. So waiting a turn is actually a significant difference. So see, he still doesn't have anything good to do. And now I can actually um, pyro shiv and, and kind of do some stuff. Um, so I can trade here, wild pyro, shiv here, and kill everything but one echoing ooze, right? I can trade, trade, sh oh, I shiv here. These would each be one ones, but I'd have a... I'd have a three, a three six, and a a three one. I could also just hero power trade, trade, but that leaves him the four five. I think that's, I think that's a little too good. Uh, and the, the ordering there was actually important, or, or I could have killed some stuff out of order. Uh, oh, I didn't even notice we drew our um, Nerubian Prophet. Shouldn't that be a 5 cost minion? When did we draw that? Squire. Oh, I guess we got it from the Shiv, right? So, Ready, or, or this was our normal card draw, this was the Shiv. So that's right, now it's a 5 drop. Got it, got it, got it. <clears throat> uh, I probably just trade, uh, hero power, trade, trade, play the creeper. This will be a 3 2 still. Uh, sapping doesn't really help, so. I, I could hope for a good matter bomber, I guess. I could trade matter bomber and hope it hits this once. Uh, that's actually not too bad. But I get punished real hard if it doesn't, so I'm not going to do that. We're ahead a little bit, so I think we can just make the right plays. Uh, I'm actually going to play the Grunt here instead of the, uh, instead of the Haunted Creeper. Just because it gives me one more attack on the board. So now I have six attack to kill a big thing, like a, a Druid of the Claw, for instance. If he played a Druid of the Claw with the Haunted Creeper, I wouldn't be able to kill it. Alright, so he finally killed that. Hopefully he doesn't get anything good. Yeah, that's pretty bad. That's good for me. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna kill this guy, trade hero power, uh, probably play the Berserker and the Haunted Creeper together. Berserker and Haunted Creeper are both good against his board, if you can call it that, a board. Uh, I didn't play in the Rubian just because it's gonna keep getting cheaper and cheaper. So uh, right now it's no better than the Berserker, they're both 4 mana and this has the same total amount of stats. Whoa, that's cool. I'm actually just going to sap that, I think. I don't care about the heal. I don't have a good way to kill it, right? So why not just sap that huge minion? Uh, now I actually do have a way to kill it, though. Is it better to just kill it? Yeah, Druid could have some other big stuff. Uh, I can Silver Hand, Hero Power, Eviscerate, Attack, attack. I take six damage, but it heals me for eight, so that's probably fine. Well we I'm actually just going to go ahead and kill this. Makes me a little more susceptible to swipe, I guess. 
No, it doesn't change anything. If he has a buff or something, I don't want it getting buffed. Plus, it makes this a little scarier immediately as opposed to um, later. Yeah, swipe's good. Oh, Starfire. Oh, perfect. That wouldn't have mattered then, so that was a free kill. I lost uh, two face damage, but... Oh, that's fine too. We have no better way to make weapons, so that's fine for him to use, but it didn't hurt us any. Uh, so Matter Bomber's pretty bad right now. Pretty bad right now. It's one downside to Matter Bomber, plus uh, Nerubian Prophet right now is a 6-drop. <laughs> so uh, we got a little punish there. I, I played him just because I don't have another minion and I want more power on the board, uh, more attack on the board, so now I have 9 attack instead of 5. Um, so he, he, we spent 6 mana, right? Because we just wasted 4. Absolutely meaningless buff. Another downside to that. Uh, Matter Bomber maybe just got better. Trade, trade, trade. Matter Bomber. Uh, Eviscerate's also solid. Trade, trade, Eviscerate. I might still Matter Bomber. And hope that my... Uh, Uh, actually, we'll do it this way. I have to play Matter Bomber first, though, don't I? Uh, just to be sure, we'll do that. So, um, if this hit four to the Violet Teacher, that'd be just dandy. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter. I'm hoping it doesn't kill my board. I'm just playing it because I have to have the body. I realize there's some risks involved. Um, so, definitely did not. I, I could have ended up probably better off waiting. Uh, that turn was not perfect, but it ended up okay. I wanted Hero Power last just to make it less likely that one of these would die. Yeah, we, we could have handled that turn a little more smoothly, I think. It would have been more correct to leave his minions alive. Um, Played the Matter Bomber first, then he Vist. Um, probably traded one into the Violet Teacher just to be safe. Alright, so that's that's actually not the worst play ever. That's pretty good in Arena, isn't it? Man, it's a solid play. Oh, that's a such a good draw for me. Wow. Such a good draw. Oh my gosh. I can hardly believe it, how good that is. Um, I'm just gonna go face with this one, I can't do anything with it, so... Uh, we'll kill the 3 attack minion here. And the 2 attack minion here. And the 3 attack minion here. Very unlikely. He can trade here, but then we get the pretty valuable Silver Hand Regent if we do that. So, uh, if Silver Hand, Silver Hand Regent's really good with um, Stormwind. So, if he makes this trade to get the most power off, that's fine. This is very likely to survive. Oh, he's got hero power, though, of course. He can still kill it. I'm dumb. I'm dumb. But he did take four, and we have eight, nine damage showing. So, oh, he's got one of those, too. Uh, I'm not going to play the Faceless Behemoth here. I'm actually going to um, sap the Nerubian Prophet and play the Doom Pillager instead. Thank you. And I'll tell you why. Because the game is very likely about to be over. Um, if I had just gone all face and uh, left that minion up, he could have technically traded these two into the 6-6. And then if he had like a BGH on my Faceless Behemoth, I would have been out of stuff. I would have instantly been behind on the board again, so I would have been putting all my eggs in the Faceless Behemoth basket instead of um, kind of diversifying my resources and making it much harder for him to remove multiple things. Of course, that's incredibly unlikely. I probably would have won the game 99% of the time, but playing the fa Faceless Behemoth and allowing him to trade was really the only way I could possibly lose this game, because right now, what on earth can he do? We know he has an Arubian Prophet that's useless, so he has two cards that could maybe do something. None of this stuff is susceptible to BGH. Druid has very little removal. If he double naturalizes, I still have two attack from a Silverhand Recruit 
and a wicked knife. He guess he could trade too. So I still have a, an attack, right? Yeah. So we'll just win here. The faceless behemoth is the only route to losing. It turns out it wouldn't have mattered, obviously. But uh, we'll use this guy. Alright, I'm actually, um, I may play one more game, just because I'm having fun and we're doing well, so maybe make it a long video. I lied earlier. Okay, so uh, we have the coin. I may actually keep the Tomb Pillager since I have a two drop. If I get desperate, I may want to play that early. If I get another four drop to follow it up particularly. We'll get rid of the other stuff and look for some cheap minions exactly like those. That's perfect. Um, here I will go ahead and journey below for much the same reason as last game. The Pyro, I can still work with the coin. Ooh. We don't have any other dragons, so Deathwing's actually bad. I think I have to take Fugin here just because it's a really good minion. <laughs> as fun as that looks. Um, Beast is a little more susceptible than Fugin and gives them some resources. I think Fugin's just the safest play there, even though it's the less fun. Um, we'll go ahead and play the ship's cannon. It's We don't really have a way to kill that right now, so. We could theoretically pyro coin hero power next turn if he doesn't trade or something. He should probably trade, though. Play a three drop. Uh, we don't have a good three drop. Shattered Sun Cleric is not great without... Oh! Yeah, I think we Shattered Sun Cleric kill this. And play our bladed cultist. We must cleanse the sun well. Yeah. I really don't even have to play the bladed cultist, I guess. Could save the pyro for it, but I like getting it out early. We have a good four drop to follow up, so let's just load him up. He can trade into it, but it doesn't really help him much because I can hero power it down to finish. <coughs> That helps him a little. He's... Probably should... Trade... I wouldn't trade that way myself. That gives me the, the weapon as an out. Hmm. It's not bad. I feel a little bad playing the Tomb Pillager now because... Uh, no, actually, I, I don't. I don't feel bad. I trade this way. He can weapon, but then he can't trade here. So if he weapons into the Bladed Cultist, uh, this lives. If he trades here, that's really bad for him. He's on an overload. I have a good 5 drop. I think we're in a good shape. Oh, man. What is about to happen right now? What is that? The new card? Oh, Lava Burst! Okay! I, I can respect it. That's fine with me. Got a coin. Hmm. I think I just play the Fugan. I considered the Horse Rider to trade, but uh, I can't really... F well, I could follow it up with the Pyro, but the Pyro dies to his weapon. Yeah, the Fugan's just a better option here. Oh, that's good. It's a good Fugan so far. Lava Shock's perfect answer to that, though. Wow. Wow! That's a good turn. That is a sick turn. I'm gonna sap that. 
and Berserker. I'm a little scared that it's going to come back like a 7-6 instead, but um, it, it kills everything I play right now, so I just don't want to deal with it. I obviously don't want it to come back a 7-6, but he has to spend 4 more mana. I'm ahead on the board if it does. Uh, I can actually make this a 5 attack minion by doing a Wild Pyro coin. So it's got 6 health. I can Wild Pyro coin, make this 5 attack, trade into the 6 health. Yeah, that's that's right. Oh, that, that's going to work out great, actually, yeah. Oh, alternatively, Eviscerate's pretty good, isn't it? I can uh, Horse Rider Evis. Hero power. Yeah, that's just better. We had an option, but this is a really, really good play. So we had an okay play, but we ended up with a way better awesome play. He's already taking quite a bit of damage just from all those weapon attacks. Uh, we have a good board. A little low on resources, unfortunately. I'd like to see one of my big guys. That's pretty good. That's the kind of thing I feel like I need to kill. Assassinate. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Yeah, that's, that's totally reasonable. Uh, I could go this way. Actually, let's Flame Juggler first and see. If the Flame Juggler hits this, I'm going to attack it with my face. Yeah, perfect. Um, I, I was going to say that I could kill it with the Argent Horse Rider to preserve the health on this, which is better against stuff like Lightning Storm. Uh, it's unlikely that the Shaman has Lightning Storm, so I could also use the Berserker to trade in. Keep this at 3 health, but suddenly have 5 attack, so I'd have more total power on the board, uh, but be a little bit more susceptible... Um, to lightning storm. So there was ups and downs to both. Five, seven, eight. Uh, that actually doesn't hurt me too bad. I think I have to let this live. This is a little scarier. Because I have all bad minions. The Wild Pyro is very likely going to get killed by the Midnight Drake if I do this. But uh, I'm at the point where he's very low on life, so I can kind of just start pushing through. And if he trades, I can just kill it with the Haunted Creeper or the weapon. Uh, he may or may not realize that this is a coin, depending upon what he's been watching. If he knows it's a coin, he should definitely worry more about the wild pyro if he's playing little stuff but he's playing big stuff so he doesn't have to worry about it oh but that's also very very weak to wild pyro uh yeah i'm definitely gonna kill this with my face and play the spiteful i kill this instead of going face because it could trade into a minion of course um and deny me two damage on future turns so he has to find removal for this now i have 17 health he has no cards 17 health is plenty when someone has no cards I don't see how we lose from here, but it's it's always possible, right? Oh, like that's very good. That's very, very good, actually. He can kill this guy, and he should very well kill it. I can trade, trade. That's so good. Wow. <laughs> His was good, but mine is actually better. Sorry, dude. Sorry, sorry, dude. So it'd only be better if it hit the Stranglethorn. I actually have a... I, I want to go face, but I think it's actually better to do it this way. This actually increases the amount of power I have on the board simply because it's two spiders attacking instead of one. And it's... Uh, that could make a difference. It's going to be hard for him to deal with these with one card a turn. <laughs> oh, crap. I'm glad now, too, because he could start racing me, maybe. Well, I'm going to kill the spell power just, just in case there's, like, some crazy crackle or something that, like, he finds a way to kill me somehow with this thing. That's, like, my worst nightmare. Or also um, Lightning Storm, too, because my stuff all has three or less health, so 
If he lightning stormed with a spell power totem, my board would just be gone, and I'd lose the game, because I don't have a way to deal with a 7-7. Yeah, so he's trading. That means he doesn't have uh, a way to win, or AoE removal, which is good. That's the right trade. I think he has to worry about staying alive right now, as opposed to in the future. I have uh, five... But I have I have lethal, right? Yeah. I want to see what I get, though. I guess he knows that we saw lethal. <laughs> I always wait just in case they miss it. Um, all right, so uh, three and zero so far. Certainly better than our druid run uh, <laughs> already, <laughs> and we just started. So this deck uh, seems to be working pretty well. There's some fun shenanigans to pull off. So. Uh, hopefully you learned some things from my uh, advice in this arena run. So uh, thanks so much for watching. Until next time with part two of my rogue arena run that I guess I'll call my, uh, my behemoth rogue because there's a faceless behemoth. So until next time with part two of the behemoth rogue, thanks so much for watching and game on.